Sudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudasudas
ชกเกเกวาเดดาลานีชเปรเกชวากานาลามีเกชเวาเดดาสัมปุชลาติเปดุสตากิเกวาบุลลาสัพสลาชเปรเกเดชาชิตานวังกีเนลุตาตาติช
given a teaching volumes of teachings if the meaning or if the if the goal isn't to find the mind to find the nature of the mind then there is not much of goal other than that as a buddhist of course the in other religion they have a a a, a bit of different way of approaching for example some of the buddhist i mean some of the religion they believe in a god so those religion that they believe in a god uh, uh who's in a creator as a creator of the world then of course for them the goal is that to please the god so that the world will be better so in order to please the god of course you need to do many uh, ethical practices and cetera and cetera so goal is a little different than the buddhist uh goal the buddhist the buddhist the buddha's teachings always mention about the karma the karma cause and effect uh so this actually means that the world is not created by the god world is created by the <clears throat> uh by the karma 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 is actually uh, is uh, uh is 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 our own doing and uh, and also the effect of doing and uh, and that uh, itself uh how do you say uh that itself shows uh, that the nature of the mind is very much the uh how do you say principle of the karma there is no other karma than the nature of the mind it 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 comes like that it 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 how do you say it explains that way of course many people don't understand that even though we understand that the buddhist always mentioning about the karma and karma is of course cause and effect everybody knows that i mean i wouldn't say everybody but maybe 85% of the buddhist uh how do you call that buddhist uh, buddhist uh, followers or buddhist scholars they know that but they don't know that this refers to the mind nature of the mind this is the ignorant that we normally have and as a buddhist and as a, even as a scholar as a as a very educated educated kind of buddhist they don't know this part that the nature of the mind is being a karma that is something that is very 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 backward very 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 relax uh, what you got the lacking so therefore the our own goal is the nature of the mind that we have to find out and uh, of course it's a uh, easy to say that but it's difficult to practice so therefore buddha shakyamuni was very kind enough to find the solution for us and the biggest solution or the prime primary solution really which is very important is karma to find a karma to practice the karma to nourish the karma to redirect the karma the the karma karm, and also to approach the karma in a way that how do you say leads the life in a kind of a calm and peace and fruitful way generally speaking we as a buddha we as a human being in general we have to live in this world very comfortably very happily very successfully very true uh, how do you say uh, very how do you say mm, um meaningfully and we all know that we all know that and especially when it says when we say comfortably we all likes comfortable comfort comfortable happy life comfortable life but now when it comes to practice we don't know how to practice so there's a many levels of practices how to achieve the happiness of life
many many levels so that's a, that's the point where we can get a we can get a little bit of confused confusion because we believe that we we have a we have how do you say we have one way to go we have one uh, true way of going but it's not true everyone has a single how do you say different every single person has a different way of approaching because we have different way of looking at the world that's natural very natural it's not uh, something surprise or something shocking it's a natural we i like that you like you don't like that i like this you don't i i don't like this you like this for example you like to drink water i don't like to drink the water you like drink the alcohol i don't like to drink the alcohol same with the tea coffee any sort of drink and with the food also some of you like meat i don't like meat some of you like rice i don't like the rice for example so of course we do have a liking and disliking so this actually means that we all are in a different uh how do you say different uh yeah we we have we have different senses different way of approaching the world different the life uh not only different body and different sort of style of living but we have different way of sensing the world so this is the reason why we have a different way of approaching the buddha nature we have a different way of grow, going uh, going through the enlightenment path that is reason why really the main reason why the buddha's teaching is varieties you know varieties of teachings in the lord buddha's teaching so many volumes no one has this kind of uh teachings muslim doesn't have islamic teaching religion doesn't have that that many of teaching i think only one or two volumes that's all and christianity christianity has only one bible and of course the in uh, hindu is a very 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 big religion it is the even even the biggest biggest religion in the world i would say but still has only one volume main volume and of course there are many many different volumes are there but the main volume is only one so but the, in in the buddhist we have at least 100 volumes in this in this world but of course many volumes are, are taken to the different planets as a blessings and as a gift from the buddha but uh, those volumes teachings of volumes that of, of the buddha i mean the teachings of the buddha those are in the volumes in this world uh, uh i think uh, more than hundreds so so many volumes of teachings are there because so many varieties of approaching enlightenment path we have a different way of ta- tasting different way of thinking naturally so therefore we need a lots of different teachings generally some people i mean nowadays some people thinks that buddhist is very confusing very complicated which is true in a way it's a very complicated but in a way it is a very 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 interesting for us to choose because you know the teaching is designed so that we all can join together and how do you say enjoy and uh, how do you say uh, practice mm. so it's not at all a bothering uh, boring not at all a boring not at all how do you say uh mm uh dic- dictating you know dictating it is not a dictating kind of uh, religion that somebody says you have to do that you must do that if you don't do that you're finished not like that you have a varieties of ways you you can choose so that you can you can develop your life adjust uh, you know adjusting to the nature of the mind to the nature of the things that are 
uh, how do you say, uh, that are uh, functioning in your system. So, for instance, you may like, I mean, the, I may like to sort of uh, join in in, the, in a way that uh, uh, say uh, in a way that you uh, uh, for example like uh, you know in, in, in the Mahayana like if you, you, the, you the, I like Mahayana but you like maybe the Theravadan the Senhinayana and some, someone likes the Vajrayana not only the liking and disliking, but also at the same time, you have the quality to practice so-and-so path. And I have a, d a different quality to practice so-and-so and so path. So I have to go about according to my own capacities. And also you go about your own capacities. I can't really say that, you know, you have to go according to mine. And I, I, you, you can't, you can't also uh, force me that I have to go according or follow follow your path. It's, a, it's a, the Buddha Shakyamuni has given so many choices. So this is the reason why the Buddha Shakyamuni has, at least, I mean, well, I mean, the well known, I mean, the uh, very uh, well known in the world, three yanas, three paths of the. Approaching three paths of approaching enlightenment: Mahayana, Hinayana, Vajrayana. So, of course, uh, Vietnamese and Chinese and uh, Tibetan. I mean, Tibetan is a little bit like a unique, but uh, uh, Tibetan. No, the Chinese and the Vietnamese, I think. And um, mm, I don't know. Um, then many many other places like Taiwan, Hong Kong, I don't know, Malaysia, all the uh, Buddhists in these countries, uh, majority uh, they are f uh, strictly follower of Mahayana, and uh, Sri Lanka, Burma, and then some other places like in India also many of the Indian uh, Buddhists of course now not many not many of them exist anyway but uh, whoever is in there in the in the in the real uh, down down in the India India down plain in India uh, there are Theravadan followers mostly and um, and the reason why I say that uh, Tibetan is a little unique is that Tibetan Buddhist is a very much com combination combination of the uh, three yanas you know Tibetan Buddhists always practice three of them at the same time in a way it is very 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 uh, very good I would say it's a very very superb way of practicing not only because I'm 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 follower of Tibetan Buddhism but it's actually it's a very superb Superb, but another way I would say, maybe negative way of explaining, is that we Tibetan Buddhist followers sometimes we get very very confused, and we don't know how to really go about, and then sometimes we just give up. Many of us give up. Many Tibetans they don't practice. They are very uh, faithful. They are, their devotion is okay, not bad. They are faithful to the kind of uh, Buddhist uh, way of believing, no matter what, but uh, Theravadan or Hinayana, Mahayana. But of course, we believe in that. So, of course, devotionally we are there, but practically we don't practice. Lately, not many Tibetan lay people, not like Vietnamese or Chinese, but that the lay people, they don't practice. Why? Because they don't get to practice. Because it's so complicated. Because three yana, we have to practice three yana at the same time. Which is very complicated anyway. Very complicated. Very confusing. But it's a very nice also. Very healthy. Not like other, uh, other Buddhist followers. For example, other Buddhist followers. For example, if myself... 
I like to be Theravadan practitioner, then I have a naturally I have a criticism to criticize Mahayana. And if I if I if I am a Mahayana practitioner, I have a natural kind of a way of I mean naturally I have a sense of criticizing Vajrayana. Because I am a Mahayana. The the, the, the Buddha Vajrayana is something that I don't understand. So we criticize each other, which is very commonly happening. I think, I guess, in Vietnamese also, a lot of, lot of, lot of criticisms are happening around between the different yanas. I'm not talking about individual, uh, personal level. Personally, of course, we always criticize. You know, I mean, I, you know, husband criticize wife, wife criticize husband, brother criticize sister, sister criticize brother. You know, children criticize parents and parents criticize children. That's of course natural. That's very nature. But between the yanas, you guys, I mean the Vietnamese, I guess, I don't know, I'm guessing. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But Vietnamese, I think, they can, they, they have a, maybe a criticism between the yanas. I am a Theravadan practitioner, you are Mahayana. Mahayana is not a very nice one or something. Or Mahayana will say that Vajrayana is not good. Vajrayana is not genuine or something like that. Not genuine, not a pure kind of Buddhism. It's a, it's a kind of a little bit of like a contaminated kind of Buddhism. Pure Buddhism is Mahayana. And then the Mahayana practitioner may say that, you know, the Theravadan gets nowhere. Theravadan gets nowhere. Hinayana is nothing. Mahayana is really the principle of the Buddhist teaching. Or you know like that. But in our Tibetan Buddhism, we don't have that problem. That problem is not there. Why? Because we, our theory is that three yana has to, three yanas needs to be practiced together. Externally we have to be Theravada. Innerly we have to be Hinayana. Secretly, we have to be Vajrayana. So we, we are very much recommended to practice three yana at the same time. So this is what we call, what I would think, or I, I always think, that is a very special, very, very special. Tibetan Buddhism has become very special in that case. But of course, it's a special, but it's maybe, may not be, may not necessarily be special in terms of practices <laughs> because it's very complicated very confusing that also must be the reason why most of the Tibetans very sorry to say but Tibetans they don't practice I'm, maybe I'm wrong again I'm wrong I hope I'm wrong because I don't like I mean I can't speak on behalf of entire Tibetans of course many Tibetans may be practicing so of course they may say, no, you're, you're totally wrong. So I have to say, sorry, you know. But to me, I feel the Tibetans are not really into practice. I mean the lay people I'm talking about. I mean those people who are, who are like, a, who are so-called renounced and uh, uh, Big Chu and Big Chunese and uh, I don't know who, who's, who, are, who are in the retreat. Maybe they are doing they are doing practices, maybe. But the lay people, they don't do that much of practice. Why? Because the teaching is so complicated, become so complicated. <laughs> because three yana comes together, so people just go, you know, haywalk, you know. Just they don't understand what to do. So of course they just give up. And not only this time, like at this age, but of course, many, many age, many generations ago, I think they have given up already. So many generations, they have not been doing practices. That is also the one of the reason why, you know, we have uh, uh, we have not much of what you call that. Uh, um, uh, you can't see many lay people practicing like uh, in the, in the grouply. If we ask them to, if we they ask them to chant. They don't. For example, just a couple of uh, a couple of hours ago, we were we were discussing over there, and uh, you guys, Vietnamese, the last year we are we are having retreat with the Vietnamese, arranged by something and uh, uh, the Tai uh, Tian 
uh, Bhikshu uh, Nis they, they arranged and uh, uh, and also of course uh, before that uh, there are some retreat um, held by many different uh, people like uh, for example uh, a, fr- a French group and uh, uh, these European people came and many people they were, uh, they were the one of the complaint that they have is they wanted to chant together they want to practice together what the nuns are chanting they want to chant together no matter whether they know or not doesn't matter they wanted to chant and they they want this time they were demanding badly that some uh, text should text should be given uh, so some 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 piece of paper at least that they can read and uh, make noise out of which is very good which is very unknown unheard of in tibetan society tibetan no matter how many people comes we have maybe a hundreds thousands of hundreds of thousands of people may coming here none of them will demand please give us a text we have wanted to chant never never ever this is monk's job this is nun's job we don't chant we don't even bother to chant never never ever this is never heard of it why because that does that actually shows that tibetan lay people they don't practice why because it's too complicated <laughs> too complicated so this is the reason why i'm saying tibetan buddhism is so special that the uh, tibetan actually what i'm what i meant by tibetan buddhism is not tibetan tibetan we are talking about the buddhism that we are right now we are practicing be it be it uh, practiced by bhutanese practiced by sikkimese practiced by nepalese entire nepalese buddhism not entire but 70% of nepalese buddhism is tibetan buddhism i would say and uh, 100% of Bhutanese Buddhism is Tibetan Buddhism. Sikkimese Buddhism is Tibetan Buddhism. So therefore I'm using just the word Tibetan Buddhism. So this is the kind of thing. What I meant to say is that, you know, the Tibetan Buddhism uh, or what the Buddhism that we are practicing right now is a combination of Buddhist, uh, Vajrayana, Mahayana and Hinayana which is again i'm as i said before it's a complicated for people like us for lay people for lay people or for uneducated people or not prepared people it's a very complicated generally speaking you know non buddhism non buddhist people i mean the non buddhist religion are much more easier than the buddhist uh, teaching and then within the buddhist teaching the uh, hinayana is very 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 uh, how do you say uh, uh, easy very how do you say yeah right easy and uh, compact then the mahayana and then the mahayana is very compact uh, compared to uh, vajrayana so when when it comes to vajrayana practice it's a very very complicated and on top of everything when you try to practice three of them at the same time i'm telling you you are asking for trouble it's a, such a big hassle it's a big hassle it's a complicated it's but it is a, such a beautiful practice you are using your ca- full capable capability full how do you say entire fully uh, how do you say quality the full quality you are using full quality whatever you have been given for your enlightenment external physical appearance in the mind no the yeah the mind and then the secret the realization three of them entirely at one go so you are putting all there into the practice by saying that you are practicing the buddhist path combination wise com- 
collaborated way. I mean, no, it's a combination, you know, together. Three of them come together. So, going back to this thing, anyway, I, uh, I want really, I was very happy to hear that the people are complaining about not having anything to read and chant together. This is very good. I was always saying that when I give teachings to Ladakh, to Ladakh and Ladakhi peoples, in Ladakh and Ladakhi peoples, in Ladakhi people like that, uh, the 100% uh, of Tibetan, uh, the, the Ladakhi people or Ladakhi Buddhist people are practicing Buddhist, uh, Tibetan Buddhism. So, you know, many, many, many generations ago, they have been given, they, they, they gave up already to chant and all these things. And they never chant. They never chant. Mostly they chant, they, they, what, what really they chant is Om Mani Padme Hong. That's all. That's they, they do and they are happily they do. That's it. No, they have never. So I always ask Ladakhi people, go and chant. Learn and how to read and chant. Do the same thing as monk. Do the do same thing what the nuns doing. You should be doing that. You are, you are entitled to do it. In fact, you are very much recommended to do all the chantings and all these things at the same time. But they won't do it because it's not in their blood. It's already sort of like a dried up many, many, many hundreds of years ago. It has not been there anyway. So they feel very shy to chant together. They feel very shy to even read. Even though they know how to read it, they don't want to read it because it's shy. A very daring to do that. So the main reason why they are not doing this is because it's a bit too complicated for lay people. So why? Why is this, it is too complicated? Is that, you know, I mean, uh, Theravadan says completely, not completely, but very different from the, what Mahayana say. Mahayana says it's very different from the, what the Vajrayana say. And Vajrayana says completely, seemingly it's completely different uh, things that from, from the Theravadan say, what the Theravadan say and the Mahayana say. So of course, Three yanas, three different teachings. Okay, thousands of different teachings are given, but the, the main uh, teaching that has given, main teaching that has, how do you say, um, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 divi uh, division, division. I would say three main division that uh, uh, um, <clears throat> um, that uh, uh, entire entire Buddha, Buddha uh, the, the entire teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Uh, uh, how do you say? Um, there's a word for that, but I can't find. But anyway. Uh, um, the three division, three division. You know the Mahayana, Mahayana, and Hinayana, and the Vajrayana. So they have made that. So three division. In uh, even if that uh, number is not many, three. But the three uh, seemingly, if you don't understand, it's very, very different. Very different. You know, that's the reason why uh, some Buddhists they eat meat. Some Buddhists they don't eat meat. Some Buddhists they marry. Some Buddhists they're very they are they 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 are they are celibacy they 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 don't marry. Some Buddhists they how do you say they uh, are very colorful. Some of them are very gray. So and uh, some of them has a has a has a hair. Some some of them uh, has to shave. And what does this mean actually? You know, some of them are wearing uh, brown. Some of them are wearing orange. Some of them are wearing gray. Some of them are wearing black. What does this mean? You know, so people don't understand. Even just just the color of the dress, people don't understand. It's already confusing. Some people, I think they they went to some gathering. I think Tibetan uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhist gathering somewhere. I don't know. Maybe in Buddha Gaya or maybe somewhere else. And they were, <laughs> they they came back and they, they said, you know, uh, we were very confused, you know. All the Rinpoches, they're wearing different hats. 
and looking at the hats like a headache, you know. For us also, it's a headache, you know, because who is wearing what? What is you know represent what? You know, which represent what? It's just a, too confusing, confusing. Even to look at the hat that the people are, the Rinpoches are wearing, it's complicated. It's just unbelievable. They say, and I was bl- I was also just laughing like. Nobody's business because lo- just listening to him saying that is a very true. Because Tibetan masters, you know, some have, you know, big one, that, some of them are very tall, some of them are low, some of them are green, some of them are brocade, some of them are red, some of them are yellow. I mean, some of them are looks like a, you know, bucket, you know, bucket, one bucket goes into the hat. It looks like a, a strange. And nobody knows what represent which represent what, you know, it's just a complicated, too complicated. Because different yanas and the different things, we just, uh, you know, comes together and then, you know, it goes, it goes crazy. You know, so of course people uh, looking at them also is just like a crazy, you know, it's like a, it makes, it makes also us like a feel little dizzy, I think, looking at them. I mean, I'm one of them, you know. If, if I if I stay there, I I hate to go with all these people, you know. So therefore, I don't I don't I you you guys don't see me. I see my pictures in that in this in in, in their group. Otherwise, if I go there, of course, I'm also one of them, you know. I don't. God knows what sort of hat I have. Maybe I have a I have a very colorful big one, huge one. Maybe the biggest one. <laughs> so that sort of things, you know. Well, represent what? You know, this is the confusion, the confusion that they have. So people, ha- now how to deal with this kind of confusion? You have to have a very smart, you have to have a very smart, intelligent, knowledgeable mind to cope with all these color, colors, shapes, different design, all these things. For example, hat itself. We have to understand and we have to f- have a specially open-hearted mind to understand all of these things. So you have to have a unique uh, capacity, unique quality to, uh, how do you say, to, yeah, to, 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 to have, it, have, have all of their, all of these things digest. You need to have a special quality which is, I mean, the, whereas, whereas in other cases, you know, it's not very complicated, you know. You always see one color, one hat, one thing to do, that's it. For example, Theravadan is a very much simple. Why? Because color is more or less the same. Burmese is a little bit darker than the Sri Lankans, for example. Little, little browner, that's it. But then the same, style is the same. Chanting is the same, almost. So it's like everywhere you go, it's just not very complicated. You accept that and simple, very simple. You don't really have to have a special quality to adjust yourself with. No, nothing. It's very simple. So when you go, when you go outside of the Buddhist uh, realm, then say uh, Islamic religion, uh, the other religion, the Catholic and the Christian, there are some uh, complications, but mostly it's a, it's a uh, kind of similar, a very simple, very simple, you know. And then the actually main thing that makes everything simple is God. The God is the one that makes life is life very simple. I would say. That is good, actually. That's very good. I would say that the believing in a God as a creator is not bad, actually. Even though we Buddhists doesn't believe, but it's not bad. Because then the life simplif- simplifies a lot. Because it's God. The God will manage everything. You have to be, uh, how do you say, faithful. You have to be there making the God happy. That's all you have to do. And then the rest, God will take care of you. So simple. And that is the, that, you know, bearing that philosophy in your mind, your life is very simple in that way. So therefore everything is like a, you know, the, the, if you have that kind of view, then that kind of view 
creates or uh, derives into the into the realm of activities the action the action also will be much more simple for example the dress is also going to be one and that's it not much of complicated not much of colorful not much of things that you have to really talk about nothing that's very gray because you know everything goes the concentration goes to the god that's all and also um, the practice also when it comes to practice not only action but the practice like a practice ritual practices also have a simpler way of uh, pract practicing uh, whereas now uh, now when it comes to uh, the buddhism then it has uh, the complicate complication starts uh, from Theravada then to Mahayana, Mahayana to the Vajrayana, and within Vajrayana also there are there are uh, different tantra, tantric uh, uh, levels. So external tantrics are much more easier to practice than the inner tantrics. Inner tantrics are much more easier than the secret tantric. Secret tantric or the Dzog, the Dzogchen and then the the mother tantric and the union tantrics are very very complicated it's just unbelievably complicated is why because then it comes it comes to one's own individual mind when it comes to higher the higher you get the the, the theory gets in uh, much more deeper in in within your mind not only the god is not existing but er, nothing is exist except your mind and the mind is also, when it comes to the higher, then mind is also not exist. Nature of mind is not mind. It is a, what? Silent. So, that is the thing. So, this is something that you have to understand. So, this is the reason why then the complication starts. But then, you know, what you have to do, or what you really have to have as, an, as a quality to cope with these sort of things is you have to have a very open mind very open minded so this is the reason why we as a Buddhist generally speaking we always say open your mind open your mind you know you have to open yourself instead of keeping yourself narrow narrowing your mind down that's not good. You have to open. You have to, how do you say? You have to, uh, uh, they call it uh, clarify, uh, clarify. Clarify. They call it spaciousness. You know? And they call it uh, uh, crystal, crystal light. They call, they, they call it in a different way of uh, terminal, they, they, they different terminologies. But actual, actual fact is that your mind needs to be opened in order to have a for example if you if you want this room to be to be shined by the sun entirely you must take off the roof otherwise you cannot get the sun in so uh, similarly that you must take off your how do you say your conceptual mind the roof of the conceptual mind, then the the true true sun will shine. You know that is the reason why we always emphasize about that. We always emphasize. We always we always talk nothing but about opening your eyes. Opening. This is the reason. They sometimes they use it third eye. Open your third eye. Of course, there is no physical third eye that you can open in your forehead. No way. There is no such thing. I don't believe in it. Of course that doesn't mean that there is not possibility. There is no possibility to have eyes up there. No, I don't say that. You may find uh, some, some baby born with the eyes here. Yes, one day can be possible. I mean, nowadays, you know, you can see many different babies. The, ba the one baby has two two headed two headed baby, yes, many you have that in a, you can see in the newspaper and everywhere. So you know one baby one one body with the one two head is possible. So that means we have four eyes already. Anyway, so of course uh, why not you can have a three eyes 
Nothing. What? There's no reason why not. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't apply to what we are talking about. We talk about third eye in Tantric Yana. Third eye. That actually means you open, open something, open your narrow mind. This is the this is the forehead. You know the forehead part of the body. When you when you have a little bit of a conservative way of thinking, and we have a little bit of angry and aggressivity, and something like a, you know, uh, something to do with your anger, ignorance. That then this this part of the body goes like you know, uh, goes uh, goes. Uh, uh, I don't know what you call that kind of thing. You know, like uh, or. Oh, mm, I don't know, in English, I don't know how to say, but you know, it goes like this, you know, uh, shrink, not shrink, but you know, uh, lines will come up and you know, and this actually means you are very narrow, narrow mind, you are angry, you are sad, you are uh, thinking nonsense, you know, so therefore you, you, you have lots of uh, things comes here. You you almost you always uh, fee, see a uh, lots of wrinkle here, you know, not wrinkle like this, but wrinkle that way, you know. So you see a lot of things over here. This actually refers that you are thinking a lot. You are worried. You are concerned because of the conservative, conservativeness. So uh, in tantric yana, we have a we have a saying that. Opening third eye over here, instead of having many wrinkles and nonsense over here, just open it, and we have eyes here. It actually means open your narrow mind and and let the sun to shine in. You know, forget every nonsense. Don't think. Don't think. Don't cling with the conceptual mind. This is what they what what it re really represents by having an eye over here. It doesn't mean that real physical eyes need to be there so that you can be tantric practitioner. No way. Of course, you can. These days, you can operate. I think you know uh, plastic surgeries. You can go to a doctor and you pay a little bit of money. I think they will they'll make you a, a, a the, the the eyes over here. I'm sure. I'm sure that they can do that. I don't know whether this, that eye will be able to see anything or not, but you can definitely, they will make a very nice, lovely eyes <coughs> over there, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make any sense. So you have to open your mind to see the real God within yourself, the real thing within yourself. There's nothing that uh, is, exists out there. So this is the different, this is the total difference, difference between the Buddhism and the non-Buddhist religion. Now, of course, uh, 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 yes, okay, that's good enough. Now, when we talk about, when we talk about uh, Guru Yoga, the Guru Yoga is, as you know, is a terminology, it's a very specific, special terminology of, uh, of, of, of a Vajrayana tradition. Vajrayana tradition, Guru Yoga, you know, Guru Yoga is a special terminology of Vajrayana tradition. And also, this is also a special method, not only just a special terminology, but it's a special method to open your eyes, to open your, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, how do you say, to open, to open the gate, to open the gate uh, to uh, to the true world, to the world, we are very closed. We are very closed with the name of religion, name of tradition, name of caste, name of vow, name of precepts, name of uh, being monk, being nun, being woman, being man being happy, being unhappy, lots of labels we have. All these, all these labels do nothing but closing the door. That's it. 
they will definitely help you to close the door close the lid so that you will be permanently dark that's the kind of uh, how do you say uh, how do you say that's the kind of a uh, help that eventually they this thing will uh, give give you or this thing will provide you so therefore all the labels need to be finished need to be get rid of that's very important all the labels what you have are nonsense actually you know all these things you have to you have to be out of all these label, labels so this is the you are in order to do that guru yoga practice is very much needed very much recommended for people like us still we need a blessing you know the reason why i'm saying this is needed for the people like us is means we people people like people people who need the blessings even though blessing is also nonsense actually it is a nonsense but it needs it needs it right now it is very much needed it is very much recommended also without blessing we don't we don't get, get to go anywhere but so therefore the blessing is very much needed for example like you know i mean uh, this is very simple if you want to cross the river where there's no uh, there's no bridge but there's a you know like a a a, a boat a, a small boat that takes you to the other shore so uh, what you do now you have to you have to look for that boat so you get you have to get in sit down and wait somebody to come and uh, roll the the boat and then the boat will be able to go there and take you there and finish finish the journey but once you finish the journey that boat is nonsense actually it's uh, it's nonsense for you it is not needed it boat you you can't you you can even forget it you know you don't you don't have to even remember you don't have to even talk about it it's just nonsense if you say oh that boat is a lovely i want to carry that you you carry that okay you carry it you carry it and go uh, uh, um, uh, climb the mountain and go to the mount everest what are you going to do with the boat it's a nonsense you know it was very useful yesterday when you cross the river in ganges ganges river but in the, up in the mountain what are you going to do with that it's nonsense it's a stupid to have that boat carrying with you you don't want to carry now that is the thing it is a nonsense actually so this is the reason why i'm saying if even if the blessing is nonsense even if the teaching is nonsense actually anything is nonsense but it's a very much needed right at that moment it is very much needed so therefore the guru yoga is also very much needed right at that moment this moment the moment that we are in right now we need the blessing we need to practice the guru yoga we need to practice the mantra tantra we need to practice the great compassion love and um, all these bodhicitta all these practices needed but it's a, one has to understand that eventually this all a uh, uh, what do you call that all a uh, all a nonsense we have to understand that or eventually nonsense eventually not exist so this is what we uh, have to bear in my uh, mind so that we will be able to promote ourselves like one after the other we can just go up and up and up and up and up smoothly you'll be improve if you carry all these things in your mind very permanently and in other words if you carry this these things with the, with the, with the, with the sense of clinging attitude very much clinging attitude clings you know with the with the with the things that you are there then of course you will this will drag you down and you will never be improved 
which is very bad, very sad news, very bad news if it happens that way, you will never be improved. You will never be coming out of the muddy pool. This is a muddy pool, you know. And you are swimming in the muddy pool and you want to go out of it, but you cannot go out because you are stuck with it. Why? Because you, you are stuck with that just simply because, because your own clinging attitude, your own graspy attitude, you are grasping with something. You're always grasping, grasping something. So graspy attitude always, uh, always comes as a grip that, that, that take, uh, keeps you there uh, tidily and never let you to go to the other uh, uh, next step. So you don't want that, definitely. Hmm. So therefore, mind needs to be very much opened. Though you are, you are practicing genuinely, seriously, Guru Yoga. And not only that, 100%, not only just a seriously, 50-60% but the, 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 the other percentages are just like okay not true not true that doesn't mean that the back in the mind you have to understand everything is impermanent everything is Mahamudra everything is uh, everything is everything so it doesn't really have that much of uh, thing that you can uh, how do you say, attach yourself with. But practical level, in your practical level, you have to practice 100% devotional, dedication, full of the dedication, full dedication, full devotion, full understanding, full sort of, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, um, uh, 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 yeah, full energy, the full thing, like a, what do you call the generosity, uh, ethics, then um, uh Yeah, so that is the thing, the joyful, joyful effort. You have to put a full joyful effort, full effort. Mm. That's a very important. That is, uh, uh, in, in the Vajrayana, we always say, Guru Yoga is everything. Guru Yoga is the practice of the six paramita. Guru Yoga is the practice of the, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, Vinaya, the Bhikshu and Bhikshunese practices. They're like ethical, ethical practices, moral moralities, you know, practice of moralities, etc., Guru Yoga is everything that, you know, the Guru Yoga is the uh, visualizations and all these mantra chantings and ritual practice. Guru Yoga is everything. Guru Yoga is like a, like a entire universe. Usually, people who don't understand the vis uh, Guru, Guru Yoga very well, they think the Guru Yoga is only a method to keep, to, to, to build the relationship with the Guru and yourself. Especially in a, in, a, in a place like America or I don't know some 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 newcomers like like a, some modern uh, this thing they the guru yoga is like a they they take it as a kind of a romantic romantic kind of a, uh, uh, romantic uh, way of practicing something like a romantic way of approaching the guru and uh, to build the relationship with guru nicely. Guru warmly, Guru as a, as a, as a, your uh, as as a method to to get rid of your loneliness, so the Guru will be coming and support you, so that you will feel not lonely at all. So that sort of thing, but that's that's nonsense actually. Guru Yoga is more, much more than that. Guru Yoga is not only just to build a relationship with the Guru and you. Guru, when we say Guru. A guru represents the universe. It's not just a person. 
is not just an educated man, educated person, knowledgeable person, compassionate person, uh, or very high Rinpoche, very high uh, master, high uh, bhikshu, high bhikshu knees. As you guys, Vietnamese, they always say, most, most venerable. <laughs> uh, uh, two, double most. Uh, most, most venerable. And most venerable. And venerable. <laughs> and many levels, you know. So, you know, there's sort of, we don't say that. Guru Yoga, Guru is not a human being at all. It represents, it, it, it refers to the universe, you know. It's a universe thing, universal truth. Even though you will, you will, you are looking at a man, you will look, you are looking at a master. But mas, that master representing the universe. He's not representing a most most venerable. Oh, he's venerable. No, nothing. He's not even a venerable. He's not even a nothing. He's not even guru also. Guru is just a terminology that we feel comfortable with. So therefore we just rely on terminology. Guru. A guru also represents. Gu refers. Gu, how do you say? Gu ah, comes from the word, Sanskrit words, guna is the quality. You know? Rupa refers to uh, the universe, the existing, existence of universe. So it's a quality of universe. So he's not a him or her. He's not an educated person or not educated person. He's a, un, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a kind person. He's a compassionate person. He's a knowledgeable person. He is, uh, you know, such a, uh, such a superb. No way. These are nonsense. He is nothing but the quality, combination of quality of universe. That is Guru. Guru is a, such a, such a uh, how do you say, superb word, I would say. Superb terminology. It's a, such a great terminology, you know. Even though, of course, many people don't like that. Because many Gurus are a uh, 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 founder of a cult. You know, very cultish kind of way of... Uh, calling it nowadays many in america in 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 other countries maybe in canada many places now many cultish kind of religious or whatever beliefs are uh, founded by many of those so called guru so therefore now uh, straight people in in the west straight people means in the sense you know normal kind of you know normal means like a like people like us you know little idiot people uh kind of, um, what do you call that? We don't know very much. We just be- want to believe what we see. That's all. So that sort of thing. The, the, Sometimes I call it straight people because, you know, straight. We just don't know. We just don't have any views uh, right and left. We just have a view, st- straight view. <laughs> That's all. So I call it straight, straight people. So straight people like us, we don't like guru very much. The word guru is too much to us. So I can understand. Because many of the guru being very naughty, they have been really uh, outrageous, you know. So therefore now, of course, the, um, how do you say, popularity of the name of the guru is very much down. Not much of respected, unfortunately. But actually speaking, terminology of guru is really beautiful guru, uh, terminology. It's just the two words, gu, ru, just a sm- small, very, very compact, very nice, but represents a lot. It represents entire quality of universe. So it's a, so therefore, you know, now of course the faulty what we faulty or mistake that what we are doing is that we think that person is guru. That is very much wrong. That person, you know, a person. You know, and pointing at him or her guru that's not right he is there to show you the path and he is there to sort of like mesmerize yourself 
and uh, you know and but then that doesn't mean that he's he's a guru even buddha shakyamuni himself said i am not a buddha as long as you see me as a buddha you will never see the buddha this is what buddha shakyamuni said that he didn't use the word guru though but he said buddha please don't look at me as a buddha i am not a buddha buddha you want if you want to see buddha you have to get rid of idea of me being a buddha first you have to get rid of that idea then you will see the buddha so oh, until then you will never see the buddha please don't see me as a buddha so this is a very 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 profound teaching but we have a even though buddha said that 100 times we never understood still today we don't understand how to not to see buddha as buddha we don't see that we always see buddha as buddha unfortunately we always see guru as guru oh yes and especially you say my guru he is my guru such a wonderful guru such a kind guru such a compassionate guru wow unbelievable if he is not there how can i survive finished i'm finished it this means you are nonsense you are you are finished already that actually means you are finished he better go this guy better go you know this this guy better go better finish you know this means you are trapped badly you know digging yourself into the into the what you call that graveyard you are really you are in the graveyard by saying that this is not right you have to get rid of yourself from that kind of notion definitely that notion kills you actually the guru needs to be seen universal truth straight away you know guru represent what ru represent what all these things you have to understand very well and then that will so that will that will lead you to openness the universal openness the great openness the great perfection so all these greatness comes right after that if you have one this thing then you don't see you don't see the nature you don't see the mind nature of the mind you don't see you don't get to see no matter what you do you will maybe it will pr- help you to get somewhere in in terms of let's say relative level but it will never get you to what you are looking for looking into looking for you will never this is the reason buddha but that is of course not only in the mahay vajrayana but mahayana sutrayana and also the uh, sutrayana the uh, the sutrayana believers they do believe that the buddha shakya the fact that the buddha shakya muni said don't don't you ever look at me buddha as buddha they he they believe it they say that the buddha said that but then we caught up with the mind that the buddha shakyamuni is a buddha mr so and so is my guru mrs so and so is my guru this and that it's just a label is so important you cannot you can never peel the label out and throw it away it's a, such a difficult thing to do and this is very unfortunate you know so therefore we caught up with that and we have no way to go anywhere else you just stuck with that and then that's it you will never get improved the compassion will never get improved love never get improved devotion never gets improved why because you cannot get rid of that label out of your guru as being guru you know that is the thing that you have to understand very very well in order to practice a genuine guru yoga the guru yoga needs to be practiced with the idea of guru being universal truth not being a human being not being a human being you know that is the greatest fault or greatest mistake misunderstanding that we have so therefore 
First of all, what we need to know is that we have to get the label out of the guru, saying he is a, he's his guru. He's not. First of all, he's not guru anyway. You know, and who is he? He is a Mr. So and So. No, he is not Mr. So and So. Also, and what he's what he's Tibetan? No, he's not Tibetan. Throw it away. So well, who is this? He is nobody. He is a universal truth. That's it. He is not even he. For example, in in a, in a, in a sutra of Avalokiteshvara, we say that the Avalokiteshvara is neither male nor female. So this is actually means that the Avalokiteshvara is a great compassion. It's not Avalokiteshvara is not a, a male deity or female deity. It has no sex that identifies the Avalokiteshvara. So this is similarly that the guru is not him, not he. Guru is not her or she. Guru is not a Tibetan nor Indian foreigner. Nothing. No identification. No label. That is the difficult part. But that is the key part of key part of the Guru Yoga. We people like us, we have been practicing Guru Yoga, maybe most of the life, entire life, I would say. Guru Yoga, Guru Yoga, Guru Yoga. How many times you uh, recite the mantra of Guru Yoga? How many times have you did this thing, that thing? Yes, I did hundred thousand times, million times, this and that. Yes. But did you manage to take out, take off the label from that man? Okay, most probably your guru is a human being, uh, a man human being. Okay, okay. Then take you. Did you manage to take the label out of his him his head wherever the guru is written? No way. So that means you have not done good job, not done, not well done. Maybe you have done something, but not well done, not well done. The the real thing, the the accomplished thing, like a, a a final thing, what you really supposed to be doing is take the label off. As soon as you take the label off, then that actually means you are practicing Guru Yoga. That actually means the blessing then start to come out, shining, whatever you say, shining, bestowing. Radiating, whatever you may call, you can call it very nice, lovely, sexy name for these sort of things. Doesn't really mean anything, but you can use it just to just to inspire yourself, because inspiration mind is very important to aspiration, to ins- inspiration, inspire yourself. It's a very important. So of course, you t- in order to inspire yourself, you can s- call it, you can call it by millions of different. Uh, attractive names doesn't matter. Crystal lights, uh, radiation, or radiating lights. I don't know whatever. And all these things, shining sun, shower. You know, there's a call. Uh, what the, uh, blessing shower? Shower of the blessing. Shower of the guru. Shower of the blessing. You can say that because you know we like showering. So of course you just sit down. Sit down. Stand, stand uh, under under a, uh, a tab, under this this uh, modern uh, this uh, shower. It's very very pleasant to sit there, to to stand there, to wash ourselves. It's a pleasant, it's a pleasure. So of course you can call it like a, you know you can call it blessing shower, shower of the blessing. Why not? After all, it's a nonsense. Where is shower coming? There is no shower. You will be smelly. You will be smelly like nobody's business. There is no shower. There is nothing. But you just, you know, you can call it shower of blessing. Why? Because it inspires you. And inspiring, inspiring your mind. Inspiring after inspiring your mind, it will help you to open your mind more, so that it it works a lot. So go ahead. Go ahead to inspire yourself by calling it 
with a lot of different interesting names interesting way of term, uh, putting uh, putting the things across so that sort of thing you know so that then this this itself like inspiring the inspirational mind i would say inspirational mind itself is a blessing i wouldn't call it maybe it's a total blessing but it's a blessing inspirational mind itself is a is a great blessing great blessing so therefore guru yoga is very much connected with the blessing and blessing is very connected with the mind and then the mind is very connected with the guru so this comes uh, you know like boomerang you throw it and then it comes back you know so it's like a you know devotion uh, med- devotional mind and then the mind itself and then the the guru and uh, and all these things are very much connected very much connected and the nature of the mind is guru guru itself guru is the nature of the mind nature of the universe this is the reason why guru rupa guna rupa guna nature or the quality or the principle is guna rupa is the universal existence so of course the universal existence the quality or the principle of the universal existence is guru guru nothing but guru guru is nothing but existence of universe or the the, the quality or the principle of the guru uh, principle of the universe but this is something which we at least we have to start to understand we have to we have to we have to how do you say try to understand this is what i always keep on saying these days the newcomers and my students please don't be attached to me as me a person attached to the lineage it attached to what you call that the 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 teaching the inter- attached to the what you call that the uh, the the teaching yes that is the thing first you think like that teaching and the teacher that is what buddha shakyamuni said buddha is not important second the most important is dharma so that is the thing in my case also you please if you want to attach yourself with something please don't try to attach to me me i am nonsense i am just a an extra headache for you why do you want to get attached to me please if you want to get attached please be attached to the teachings of my my teaching you know if you want to get attached that is much 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 more healthier than getting attached to me this is what i always keep on telling to my people and it's true also i am i'm saying in a small scale but buddha shakyamuni saying in a bigger bigger scale same thing same language what we are talking about buddha shakyamuni said please dharma means his teaching his teaching is very very important his teaching i am just giving teaching but you have to follow the teaching you have to nourish the teaching you have to have a devotional way of approaching the teaching if not i am nobody he is he saying that he said that many times so the same thing but nowadays guru yoga practitioner nowadays young modern guru yoga practitioner they are teaching is no 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 longer important philosophy is not longer no longer important little bit of chanting is okay yeah? because just an excuse to say i am around that actually means like a uh it it's sort of like a hallucinating you know it's it's hallucinating and say oh i'm doing something and also it makes a little bit like a guru happy also that oh i asked him to do that he's doing that okay that means he's a very good boy he she's a very good girl so of course to keep the relationship that way so it's nice to do something yes but that's not at all the way that guru yoga is supposed to be developed guru yoga is a something much 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 more bigger than that it has to have a universal understanding it has to have a deep devotion 
It's a devotion. It's a very much devotion. It is not something emotional level. It's just not only just an emotion. Yes, he's a, such a great, great guru. And I am not bad. I'm also great. Uh, not great, but I'm also, you know, like a pretty good, anyway, pretty good student. So I'm, we're matching a lot. What, what I think is really my guru say the same thing, you know. So what he said is very matching my, with my life. So uh, we are so ch- matching. Oh, so this is what I say. It's a romantic idea already. A very much romantic idea. And so matching and all these, almost like a couple. Marrying a, marrying, a, marrying a boy, marrying a girl. It's something like that. Almost like a, like, a, like a marriage. In a way, nothing wrong anyway. Spiritual marriage and then the uh, a, a, a material marriage is, a, I mean, there can be a similar similarity. Similarity is there. So that can be even spiritual marriage. Can be called it spiritual marriage also. In a way, there's nothing wrong. But if you have that idea, that idea, uh, plant, planted into, uh, into, into your conceptual mind, then this is a killer. Because this, 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 this really leads you to the 100% wrong direction. That is not right. So therefore, I always say, rather than having a romantic idea to start with, we have to have devotional mind, very much devotional mind. Devotional in the case of, in, in, in the sense that, you know, a thorough understanding of the, whatever I said, guru, what, it, what guru, gu means, ru means, and what this guru, this this man, you know, that pointing to a man, Tibetan guy, or maybe Indian guy, or whatever, you know, whoever he is or she is coming from, that you point to him, who is he actually? You should find out, who is he? Who is this person? What is he doing? What is he, he represents? So that is something you have to dig and find out. That is the thing. That is then, this is the way you develop the true devotion, a real devotion, not emotional devotion, but the real devotion. You will find out. If you, if you, if you try to find out, you will find out what is there. For example, if you, if you find out whether there is an elephant in this room, you find out, I find out, and then you will find out. That doesn't mean that you will find an elephant here. But you will find the fact that elephant is not here. That means you found out. You found out that the, that this room has no that this room has no t- elephant. No elephants in this room. So you found out. That is so called what you found out. So you this is so called the wisdom of Guru. Is is he is he that is he is she that blah 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 blah. You found you found out. And nothing, 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 nothing. And then that means nothingness, emptiness. That is the great gate to the universe. To the, to the real, true Guru. It will come. If you find out that, then that, that is the gate. That is the main gate that you are open. Or you are, you are really, you are, you are, you are, you are, I mean the uh, leading, leading you to the, to the true nature of the Guru Yoga. But we are not asking that question. Instead, we have that, how do you say, how do you say, that um, uh, um, uh, graspy attitude to the figure of the guru. Oh, he is a tall, he is a fat, he is a young, he is educated. As I said before many times, when I when I hear that the people are saying, you know, people all people saying, you know, my guru is, is so and so and so and so, he is so kind, he is so educated, he is so and so, yeah, he's from that, you know, I feel, I feel really pain, you know, to hear these sort of things, you know, I just, 
I mean, I don't want to say that, but I, so I, I mean, of course, I never said that, but I feel that, you know, come on, shut up, shut up, don't say anything. Just keep, 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 keep yourself. Keep it, keep it for yourself, but don't talk, don't talk. Please. Enough, enough, you know. I want to say that, you know. I'm so, uh, you know, I can't, I can't take it, you know. When people keep on saying something about their guru, I just, please, shut up. Because it doesn't mean anything. It just, it shows their weakness, their sadness, their hunger, hunger, their dissatisfaction, you know, that sort of thing. It's so draggy, you know, when I hear that, you know. I'm not, I, it doesn't, it never makes me feel that such a great, wow, he found such a great guru, wow, you know, lucky him, you know, no way. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Why? Because I know how to approach the Guru Yoga. I know what this Guru means. And this guy is saying that his Guru is such an educator, such a nice person, such a kind. Yes, but stop it. Just don't talk, you know. You got it wrongly, guy. Please, you got it wrongly. You got him wrongly. He's a great, yes, but that is, that is not what you want. You know, you want something. But this is not that your guru is not great. But you have to be great in terms of getting guru as a great person. You have to be great. So, of course, you go back and do some mundro, do some preliminary practice. Please, don't talk about the guru. Sit down and uh, go back. Go back to wherever you come from. And then practice mundro. Practice purification. Hundreds of millions of thousands of uh, prostration you have to do. <laughs> Hundreds of millions of, you know, Vajrasattva you have to do. You have to do all that. Miller Rapa did how many years of constructing and uh, fulfilling the uh, Guru's uh, wishes? Constructing buildings, you know. Huge buildings, you know. And destroy after, after finishing, uh, almost finished, and then of course. Guru comes and say, okay, destroy. I don't like this. My son would not like this also. This is meant to be a resident for my son. My son will not like this kind of shape. No, please destroy and build somewhere. This is not a very good place also after all. We have to ni find a nice place and then you please build another one. My son will definitely like it. That, that place, this, this place is not very good. Sorry. Take off. So, how many years of doing that by himself, without any machines or bulldozers or anything? He just did it by his hand. Why? Because he needs to purify so that he will see Guru as a universal truth. Not, not as a marpa, a person. No, as a universal truth. That's the main reason why he had to go through all these difficulties. So this is the reason why I always feel that when people say something like that, yes, okay, but go back and do Mondro. <laughs> go back and do Mondro. Purify, purify yourself. This is what I always say. And I definitely feel that we need purification. Purification means in the sense that we have to purify the misconcept. Misconcept means the concept of saying the guru is guru a guru is a human being my guru is a tibetan my guru is indian you know i am so and so you know and then on top of that you can say good things you know he's educated he's kind he's this he's that doesn't matter he's unkind also okay very good Marpa is most unkind in the world, I think. Unkind master. Marpa is most unkind. Marpa Losa, the, the, the master, the guru of Milarepa, is most unkind in the world. Doesn't matter. It didn't matter to Milarepa at all. Marpa didn't, need, didn't have to be kind, romantic, soft, you know. No way. Marpa is so unkind. Unk unkind guru. It doesn't matter. Unkind guru can be there. Kind guru is there, yeah. Probably I will prefer to have a kind guru. 
you know if you ask me whether you like kind guru or unkind guru i would say i prefer kind guru of course but of course doesn't matter if i can cope with anything it just doesn't matter kind guru or unkind guru the guru is guru doesn't matter but for us we need a kind guru and not only we need a kind guru but we have a graspy attitude towards that person and give him a big label saying kind guru you know a big label so this is big nonsense big mistake huge mistake already done this is not right you have to have a universal concept the concept of being universe okay anyway uh, time is up for this morning and uh, we will be uh, talking teaching on this sort of thing for, um, quite number of times i think um anyway do we the i was rec- request uh, singit seva also so i will go through the singit seva also a little bit but singit seva or any kind of practices or teaching uh, needs to go through the guru yoga without guru yoga we cannot practice any kind of things we kind we can't you may be practicing green tara white tara avalokiteshvara avalokiteshvara uh, what you call that the uh, uh, amitabha you can practice hundreds of them but guru yoga is the principal practices of everything so it's very much needed the guru yoga needs to understand thoroughly very much important very 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 important so anyway today being a first day i wanted to thank uh, you all once again and um, of course this retreat was uh, initially uh, requested by uh, the uh, changchup from vietnam and uh, arranged uh, by the nuns over here the office the amitabha office they arranged uh, nicely and i hope you guys will uh, in uh, i wouldn't say enjoy but uh, we'll have a pretty uh, good time and uh, uh, of this retreat but uh, but overall i think it's a uh, most important while you are in a retreat not to talk you know not to gossip i always tell my nuns over here also that who are in the retreat i'm not i'm i'm not permitting or i'm asking them not to talk and the same with you guys that you are in a retreat right now for a couple of days during the retreat should not be talking uh, you know uh, silent mostly is the silent retreat is the best retreat and of course uh, if you want to discuss about the teachings or something that related to the retreat then of course you are allowed you are most welcome to talk asking questions or whatever but i think uh, just gossiping how you know whether it's so cold so so hot you know the dusty smoky you know hungry drinking sleeping you know how did you, how was your last night you know when did you come here this is none of our business they are here anyway when did they come it doesn't matter they came here anyway so it doesn't matter you know which flight they took doesn't matter which flight they are going to take back doesn't matter let, let you know let it be they are here already anyway these are sake of conversation you know these are the just to kill the time if you have a lot of time and if you have a, if you if you if you want to kill the time as you as you always say then of course these conversations are very much needed but i don't think it the retreat is appropriate to do these sort of things you know and don't ask a lot of questions it makes people also make talking and this is not good for them also you know so let let it be you know let you know make them make them happy make them how do you say leave them alone you know leave them alone don't don't provoke their emotions don't provoke them to talk just leave them alone and this retreat is overall it needs to be every minutes of this retreat supposed to be uh how do you say rejuvenating the energy 
that you have been uh, losing or that you have been sort of like missing uh, for uh, missing you missing missing while you are in a big city and uh, office and uh, uh, work and uh, commitment like a samsaric commitment you have to rejuvenate all these things to regenerate it so this is a kind of a this 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 retreat is this retreat is a, a meant to be a kind of a place or 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 or, or, or a, uh, what do you call that a, a, a program program of rejuvenating your energy again so let's do that by staying calm and peace in a meditative mo mode you know and blank I mean, of course, the blank is not good words, not good terminology for the true Mahay Mudra practice for us. But in a way, for us, like a very beginner, a blanking yourself, blanking yourself is also a very much the uh, key point to start with. So bl sometime you try to blank yourself, do nothing, say nothing, think nothing, leave it in the moment, in that moment. Live moment by moment, you know, live by moment, not by thinking future and the past. Just remain on, it, on its own nature, the moment nature, moment, momentarial nature. That is very important. Try, try to sort of like uh, squeeze the principle of the life by not having by, 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 by living yourself in the moment uh, I wouldn't call it peace I wouldn't call it uh, any kind of thing you know peace or tranquil tran tranquilate or whatever you cannot we can, I, I wouldn't like to call these fancy name just right there just be right there. Just be there. That's it. Just be there. Keep silent. That's it. And that itself is a great moment. Whatever you may call, you will find a name for that. That You are free. You can go and find a fancy name for that. But it doesn't matter. Just be there. That's it. And don't steer, uh, how do you say, steer it up by a lot of fabrication. That is very much the principle of the retreat. The principle, you know, the principle, uh, I would say, the main uh, scale of the retreat. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Give a sulka simber show, give a gundu yanda lama. Jalme chugi bala longe jin sada alamgi. So janjibu simjo. Kung <laughs> <laughs>